We're talking all about hypermobility today, and I'm gonna give you a few tips and some information to hopefully help you with your movement and your fitness. So I'm gonna use the term hypermobility for any kind of generalized hypermobility. So this could be something like Ehlers-Danlos if you've been diagnosed with that, or it could be something that has come on over time. So hypermobility is actually about the joints. So it is described as an increased or too much range of motion in the joints. This actually isn't about the muscles. It is about your joints. It can have, it can be caused by an underlying disease that you're born with, or it could come on over time by excessive activity. Certain things like doing yoga a lot could cause a hypermobility in certain joints. But one thing I want you to keep in mind is again, this has to do with your joints themselves, not the muscles. So it's too much range of motion in the joints. So it can lead to pain, it can lead to a lot of muscle soreness, it can actually lead to muscle tightness that we'll talk about. And so a lot of times people with hypermobility do have questions about how they can work out and that's what we're gonna talk about. The first thing though I wanna address is that research is showing us that there is a very close connection between hypermobility and anxiety. Super interesting and it rings true for me in my life and in almost every client that I see with hypermobility. So I want this to be something that you see as eye-opening to help you actually understand that there are some things even outside of movement that you can do that might help with your hypermobility. I have a client right now who's going through a lot of trauma-informed therapy and going through a lot of things and she is finding that it is helping her so much with actually her pain and understanding her hypermobility too. So it's just something to keep in mind that by understanding that our hypermobility can actually do a lot to put us into a fight or flight response. It can do a lot to affect our nervous system. It can lead to that anxiety feeling. So just again, something to keep in mind as you are going through things and as you are dealing with it. I find for myself that when I am kind of in that hyper fight or flight place with some anxiety or just some feelings in general, that there are certain workouts that can help me feel better and calm down. And there are actually certain workouts that can do the opposite. And that's what we're gonna go into next. So another thing to keep in mind with hypermobility is that there are many moves that you can do but that doesn't mean you should do all of them. So let me explain what that means. When you have hypermobile joints, you tend to be very good at making beautiful long shapes, things like dance and yoga, and even some Pilates poses will come easy to you. And so you'll go to those classes and the teacher will say, oh my goodness, you are making those beautiful shapes. Let's do more and more and more and your joints won't like it because it's taking them to their end range. And in hypermobility, that's actually what we want to avoid. We wanna avoid end range. I wanna work you more in that middle range that feels really safe to your joints. So that is another thing to keep in mind for fitness is I, as your physical therapist, if I was seeing you one-on-one -on -one and you had hypermobility, I would recommend staying away from yoga right now staying away from really deep stretching. And that doesn't mean you might not be able to do it someday. So I'll give you my own example. I have hypermobility in my shoulders specifically, and I would get recurrent bursitis and impingement tendonitis, and it caused a lot of pain until I realized that by staying strong in those upper back muscles and in my rotator cuff muscles, by staying really strong there, I could help control that range of motion and make my shoulders happy. So as long as I stay strong and keep up with those kind of workouts for strengthening, I can do yoga without a problem because I understand how to control the motion and my joints are happy. I have found though, if I take time off of strengthening and I just go back to those really deep mobility poses, I will cause pain in my shoulders. So that's what I mean by saying, I would never say anything in general is really bad, but what you wanna do is make sure you're balancing it, that you know how to control your range of motion when you have hypermobility, that you work in the mid range, you are not working out here to the very end range and stretching as far as you can. 
you're strengthening and working right here. And then maybe in the future, you'll be able to do some of those deeper poses if you choose to and if you want to. So that's something to keep in mind. Just because you can make those really deep stretches or those really beautiful poses, just because you can do it, doesn't necessarily mean you should. And that is okay. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? Another thing to keep in mind with hypermobility is the intensity of your workout. You might not be that person who wants to jump into the most intense, high intensity interval training three days a week right away. Because again, it kind of goes back to that piece with anxiety and our fight or flight system in our body. We wanna make sure that we are maintaining our level right here and not causing spikes of stress and causing spikes of cortisol. Because sometimes with hypermobility, our bodies can't actually deal with that like someone who doesn't have hypermobility, okay? So it's just something to keep in mind. It doesn't mean you have to steer clear of those workouts. It might just mean that you need to really watch the intensity level, that you do the right amount of reps for you, that you're not always pushing one past what you think you should do, and that you're increasing the intensity really generally, right? So that you can really check the next day to say, was that too much? Was it okay? Actually, that was okay. Great, so I'm gonna do that same thing in a few days, same thing in a few days, and then if your body's still responding okay, maybe you hike up the intensity a little bit the next time. But again, really being aware of what your capacity is both for stress, and that's a physical level, so stress of exercise, stress in general. Make sure you know what your capacity level is for adding weights and those kind of things, and just do it in a really gradual, purposeful way. And then the last thing I wanna address when it comes to fitness and hypermobility is we need to be picking up weights, okay? So think of weights like a literal weighted blanket for your body. So when you have that hypermobility, it's almost like you're just out here all the time. Your mind kind of is and your body is, and we, your nervous system, your body wants you to be able to bring it back in, okay? Keeping tall posture, keeping space, but bringing everything into a safer kind of range and a safer place. So I think of weights like a literal weighted blanket for our bodies when we have hypermobility. We have got to use those weights to train the tendon receptors, to train our joints, to train all those muscle attachments, to know how to keep the joints feeling safe. That's what weights can do. Body weight can do it too, but I want you to think of this. If you have hypermobility, you're gonna be able to relate to this. If I had you do a plank, you might find pain, shoulders, elbows, wrists, right? Your elbows are probably gonna lock out. You're not gonna understand how to control that. It's all your body weight through your arms. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start to train you with TheraBands and with weights and with things like that to start to strengthen up here. Then I am gonna get you onto all fours next to work that strength. Then eventually to maybe plank on your knees and we progress it that way. But you have to be doing that resistance training to help with your joints, okay? So again, Avoid those really deep stretches that you want to do because I know the muscles feel tight because they are. They're trying to actually prevent your joints from moving too much so the muscles tighten up. But deep stretches are just going to actually pull them apart too much again. So when you feel really tight in your muscles, I recommend something like a massage gun or getting a massage or foam rolling, myofascial release. Those kind of things can actually help take the tightness out of your muscles. Then let's strengthen by lifting weights a couple times a week. And I'll leave some workouts here that are really good ways to start with that. And then let's just be aware of our anxiety levels, what's causing us stress, if there's anything we can do in our life to kind of help bring that down. And I'll leave links down below to some um, videos I have for that as well, some tips. And all of that kind of helps you have a management plan for your hypermobility. So I hope that helps. Just know you are not alone. There are things you can do. Your body wants to move. I just want you to do it in a way that empowers you and makes you feel safe and makes you feel comfortable. All right, I'll see you soon. Hey, thanks so much for stopping by. Remember, subscribe to my channel and you'll be notified every time a new video comes up. 
like and comment on this video and let me know what you thought. You can also always come over to jessicavalantpilates.com to find all the resources I have for living a healthy lifestyle, including full length workout videos, healthy recipes, and a community I would love for you to be a part of. So I'll see you there.